Oh, my name's Matt. Fuck's sake, every five seconds. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about FR. <laughs> Fuck me. Hi, my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about air fuel ratios. Now, there does seem to be a bit of a confusion. I watched a Engineering Explained, and I'll put the link in this, the, the description below. And the guy on Engineering Explained, explain, Engineering Explained, did such a high t uh, not high tech, such a scientific explanation using moles and the weight of. Uh, you know, the weight of your compounds and the weight of your chemistry and stuff like that and, you know, all these other really technical ways of how to work out what your air-fuel ratio is. It is a good video because that does tell you the exact, you know, the as detailed as you can get pretty much about air-fuel ratios and all the rest of it. But there is one thing that he did fail to mention and he... He did mention it, but it just wasn't clear enough. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to uh, make it quite clear. Right, so you have your stoichiometric... What a stupid word that is. Your stoichiometric um, ratio, which basically means how much air do you need for your fuel to um, basically have a, a resulting um, complete combustion. Mine's racing ahead. <laughs> So basically how much air and fuel do you need so they combust completely, so there's no um, free air oxygen and there's no free fuel. So free fuel is a problem because it ends up pissing out your exhaust pipe, it means that your fuel efficiency drops uh, the pants out the bottom of it and it also kills all the pandas because all the fumes go out and destroy the world um, and obviously you're wasting fuel. If you go too um, lean and have too much oxygen your combustion temperatures go up and I'll go into all that in a later video. Um, and basically you're putting too much air into your cylinder, this is the thing, you know, you are trying to have um, a volumetric efficiency, which basically means if you have a one litre engine, you are trying to use all of that one litre engine, otherwise what's the point of the having it, just carrying around empty space for no reason. So you have your air-fuel ratio, which is your stoichiometric ratio, basically, and all fuels have slightly different uh, air-fuel ratios, but because most mo motorcycles are petrol, gasoline, um, the air fuel ratio for complete combustion is 14.5 uh, to 1, which basically means you need 14.5 air to 1 of fuel. Now, the one thing in Engineering Explained he did kind of miss, which is seriously important about this, he does say it in a roundabout way, but it's not as clear as I'm going to make it now. This is by mass, this is by weight. So you need 14.5 kilograms of air for every kilogram of fuel. If it was just by volume, then that would be crazy. Because if you think about it, if it was by volume, which is what some people get confused with, then it'd be 14.5 litres per every litre of fuel. And if you think about that, you've got a 14, you've got a one litre cylinder or a one litre engine. It only has to do 14 and a half revs, and then you've gone through or actually no it'd be more like 30 revs you go through 30 revs and you have to use a, a you know a kilogram a litre sorry a litre of fuel but when you're working out it's 14.5 kilos or pounds or whatever you want to call it doesn't really matter and it's kilos again um 14.5 kilograms of air is massive obviously um i think that air weighs in at 0.28 i'm completely just going off the top of my head here, it's 0.28 grams per litre or something crazy like that. Um, so now all of a sudden it makes sense, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of litres, millions of litres of air per the one litre of fuel you'll need, actually even more than that. Um, but that's the important, that's the important, um, that's the important thing to take away from what I, uh, from the engineer explaining, it does a very good job of explaining the very very scientific end of it and because he's done that I'm not going to basically go over what he said um, but the point that he didn't hammer home was the fact that this is uh, based on weight he goes on about moles which is uh, molecular weight and all the rest of it but that's you know how many times have you measured anything by the mole you know it's it's uh, 
something that doesn't happen very often, unless you're a chemist or something like that, or a particle physicist.